Good morning church. Praise the Lord. Karibuni sana. Like us to stand on our feet as we go into a session of praise and worship. Father, we thank you and we bless you. And we honor your name, O God, for yet giving us another wonderful time, O Lord, in your presence. Father, we ask, O Lord, that you dwell in the presence of your children, O Lord. We ask, O God, that you may open our hearts, our minds, O God, to be receptive to your word. Not only that, O God, to also sing our sing aloud, O Lord, the words from the scriptures, O God. We pray that you may give us the strength, give us the ability, O Lord. Allow us, O Lord, to enjoy ourselves in your presence. But not only that, O God, to ultimately give you the praise and the glory that you deserve, O God. We thank you and we bless you. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord again. Are you ready to praise the Lord? Wonderful, wonderful. Amen. Okay, let me see you clap your hands. Okay. Lord, we give you all the praise and glory in this place. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody say, we lift our hands in the sanctuary. We lift our hands to give you the glory. We lift our hands to give you the praise. And we will praise you for the rest of our days. Yes. We will praise you for the rest of the day. We lift our hands. We lift our hands in the sanctuary. We lift our hands to give you the glory. Hey, we lift our hands to give you the praise. And we will praise you for the rest of the day. Take it up. Yes, we will praise you for the rest of our days. We clap our hands in the sanctuary. Let me see you clap your hands, church.
so higher. Okay, say. Let every day that I pray, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let every day, let every day that I spread, that I pray, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let every day, let every day that I spread, that I pray, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I won't be quiet. I won't be quiet. My, My God, God is alive. How could I keep it inside? I gotta praise the Lord, oh my soul. Lord, we thank you. We worship you. We adore you. And we continue to raise our voices. We are not going to hold it in. We're going to fill the skies with your praise and our worship, Lord, for you. Because you are worthy. It's only you who is worthy. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, he's my song Let the king of my heart Be the shadow where I hide The ransom for my life Oh, he's my Join me Let the king of my heart Be the mountain Be the mountain where I run The fountain I drink from Oh, is my let the king of my heart be the shadow, where I the ransom for my life. Oh, is my song, cause you are good. My veins, the echo of my days. Oh, let the king of your heart.
just agreed we don't have to feel it and so we're gonna sing that he has won the victory amen and may these words be true for us hallelujah help me sing you have won the victory sing hallelujah Won it all. Sing death, death could not hold you down. You are the risen King. You are the risen You are seated in Majesty. That one more time, sing hallelujah. By his stripes. By his stripes. We are healed. We are healed. By his nail. By his nail. Pierced us. We are free. By his blood. By his blood. We are washed clean. We are washed clean. Now we have. Now we have the
that means so much for us that you are the risen king and that you are seated at the right hand of God the Father what that means for us is that we can come into your presence and begin to plead our case knowing that you are also pleading for us you watch us as we cry out to God the Father and you speak to God the Father on our behalf. That's what we want to do this morning. We thank you for being good to us, for your involvement in our lives in every area. There's no doubt God, our Savior, you are at work in our lives for good. Let's just pause for a minute in the presence of God and express our gratitude to him for what he has done for us and who he has promised to be to us. Our Father, even as we celebrate how you have led us this week, the many wonderful and great things that you have done uh, for us. We also come with needs that we have picked up in this past week and in the last couple of weeks. And knowing that you are a God who invites us to pray about all things, and especially today as we gather here as your people at Mamlaka Hill Chapel, we want to pray for the needs that are represented here. In particular, Lord, there are our brothers and sisters in our congregation who are grieving today because of the death of loved ones. Our pastor of worship, Pastor Edward Blemy and his wife, are grieving over the passing of their father, Lord, you have a way of filling our hearts with your peace that passes all understanding and keeps our minds and hearts in Christ Jesus. Together as a family here at Mamlaka Hill Chapel, we pray that that would be the case. There is nothing that has taken you by surprise, but death is a painful experience. And you have a way that you normally comfort your people through your word and through the touch of your hand. In the same way, we pray for Willie Litali. His brother, Lord, was involved in this tragic helicopter accident that took the 
the lives of our members of the army. Pray his brother was one of them. We pray, Father, that you would comfort him and his family. Surround him, surround his entire family with your peace that only you can give. As a family here at Mamlaka Hill Chapel, we grieve over the passing of Michael Oyel, who for years served here at Mamlaka Hill Chapel as one of our worship leaders. And his voice that reminded us of events and activities that would be coming through our media department. We know what a blessing he was to us. But we thank you that in your own timing, in your own goodness and love, he has been ushered into your presence. Today, we pray for Paul, we pray for Lucy, we pray for the entire family. Lord, give them your peace and comfort that passes all understanding. Surround them. Encourage them in every way. And we know that you have a way of doing it that is very unique. We pray for the various needs that are represented here. There are those here probably who are struggling financially. Bless them, Lord, because we came to your place to worship you and to express our faith in you by praying about our needs. We pray for Pastor Ted's son who's been in and out of hospital. Place your hand upon him. Bring healing upon him, Lord. We are asking you in faith, believing in your miraculous powers. And our Heavenly Father, we know that we are able to come before you and pray with this kind of confidence because of what you accomplished on the cross for us. Days before you would be put on that cross, you were with your disciples and you gave them a command that they were to remember for the rest of their lives. And that is to remember your death, to remember the shedding of your blood. How significant that would be. That remembrance will remind us who we are in this world and what you have called us to be. Your ambassadors, your representatives, your disciples who are disciple makers. Father, we today are just going to do that to remember the sacrifice that you made on the cross for us and what that means for us today as your people. Let me invite us to sit down as we reflect uh, on this very important. <clears throat> a celebration that our Lord Jesus Christ uh, instructed us to observe. Let me invite uh, our ushers, our real group leaders, our pastors uh, to come and, and begin to serve us. Let, let me remind us that here at Mamlaka Hill Chapel, we do observe the Holy Communion and we say what we normally call what we say uh, it's an open table, which simply means that if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you are welcome to celebrate this sacrifice that our Lord made. If you are not yet saved, you're still thinking about this, maybe you may skip it. Uh, if you're here with your children, we ask that you guide them as uh, to whether they should take or not.
Takatifu na umungu alibua Kakubali kufungu wa kile kitabu Akatafuta aliepotea Uyo limi nilie msulubisha Akatafuta aliepotea Uyo limi nilie msulubisha Narakaza mashita kazi likuwa nyingi Babiloni yote kajua jina langu Ila bahada ya kifo chake Namu yake Yesu ilishinda ukumu Ila bahada ya kifo chake Namu yake Yesu ilishinda ukumu Imeshinda hukumu yote Imeniweka huru tele Ina ima imesame Ameniweka, ameniweka huru tele Ina ima amenisame Nimesimi kabendera ya ukumbusho Nitarudi, nikushudie Ameni badilisha, kalipa jina jinga Saondoa mguu wangu Katika ilo pwawa, ladamu yake yesu Nitarudi, nikushudie Ameni badilisha, akaniba jina jibia Sitaondoa mgu wangu Katika hilo kwa wa Na tamu yake Yesu tamu Tamu yake iliomu anika Father, when the Lord Jesus Christ sat with his disciples and told them what was going to happen and that they were to remember his death and his, uh, the shedding of his blood, his disciples did not know what we know today. They looked to something that was going to happen. We look at something that already happened and we know what that means. We know that you are the one who has said in your word, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
and that is based on the accomplished work of Christ on the cross. Let me invite us to just take a, moment, a minute to pause in God's presence and interact with God for various things that are happening in our lives. Maybe a struggle with sin or a victory that you have experienced, a blessing. Express your gratitude to God at this moment or pray that God would forgive and cleanse you and that he would help you to turn away uh, from anything that you have engaged yourself in that is not consistent with his righteousness, with his holiness. On the night that our Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread and he broke the bread. And he said to his disciples, this is my body that will be given up for you. As often as you eat this together, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup and he said to his disciples, this is my new covenant. My blood. As often as you drink this together, do this in remembrance of me. Let me invite us to eat the bread together in obedience to our Lord Jesus Christ's command. And at the same time, take the cup to celebrate the blood that he shed on the cross for us. And so, our Father, we are truly, truly thankful for the accomplished work of Christ on the cross and what that means for us today here at Mamlaka Hill Chapel on this very day. Let us bless the Lord and worship him by praying the prayer that he taught us when he was here on earth. Our Father, what in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it's done in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. Please forgive us who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 Let us celebrate God by applauding to him for his work and for what he has just done for each one of us here as we have celebrated uh, this great uh, sacrifice that he made uh, for us. Let's also appreciate our worship team for having led us well and helped us to be able to worship uh, our God in spirit and in truth. While you're sitting down, let me invite you to turn to your neighbor, uh, who, anybody who's sitting next to you, behind you, in front of you, and welcome them into the house of the Lord. Would you do that? Yeah. In, in my prayer, I prayed that the, I said that the disciples, when Jesus sat with them and talked about the fact that he was going to die, they did not have a full picture of what would happen. Uh, for them, it was a step of faith or matters that they just needed to, uh, to, to, to believe. For us, it's different. We know what happened. We know that he died on the cross, blood was shed took his body, put it in the grave, and he rose on the third day. We know from scripture, what the disciples didn't know, that he's sitting at the right hand of God the Father, pleading for us. That is 
priceless. That's why I normally say that when we come to Holy Communion, let's not celebrate Holy Communion as though Christ is going to die in three days. He is alive and he is well. He fulfilled the promise that he made. So let us appreciate him with joy and gladness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Let me again welcome you to Mamlaka Hill Chapel. Uh, many of you who are here, you've been here many, many, many times. You know what we do. But it's very possible that there is someone in our midst today, a very special person. Uh, this is your very first time. You've never been to this uh, church before. It is a joy for us to have you here, but we want to recognize your presence among us. Is there anyone uh, in our midst today? Today is your very first time. Just lift up your hand wherever you are. We want to acknowledge your presence among us. We do have one here. Any, any other person? It is your first. Uh, let me ask you to stand so that the whole congregation can see you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It was a very rainy morning, and for you to have said, come rain, come sunshine, I'm going from Laka Hill Chapel, is very, very, uh, 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 very priceless for us. It's, it is, it's just such a joy. Thank you so much for coming to worship with us. It's good to be able to worship with us. I believe that uh, without any doubt, the Lord is going to bless you, and we are going to be blessed because of your presence with us today. Uh, Will Kista is going to be standing here with me right after the service. When everybody's running out of this building, you run towards us uh, because we'd like to get to know you a bit better. We'd like to take you to one of our rooms uh, uh, and have coffee or tea with you. See if you have any questions about Mamlaka Hill Chapel that we can be able to answer or any prayer request that we can be able to pray with you because it's very precious that you came to worship with us. Let's again appreciate our brother for taking time to come and worship uh, with us. Uh, let me just now invite our media team to bring us up to speed on what is happening at Mamlaka Hill Chapel. Would you, media? Hi, and welcome to Mamlaka Hill Chapel. Our vision is to be empowered to transform life, society, and the world. And our mission is to promote personal intimacy with God in order to build godly communities that will impact the nations for Christ. We are excited to invite all children aged between 4 to 12 years for our April VBS themed What a Mess starting tomorrow the 22nd of April to Friday the 26th of April 2024. We are going to have a lot of messy fun with messy games and the gospel. To sign up your child, kindly use the QR code at the entrance and info desk right after the service. Are you new to this church? Did you join Mamlaka this year? Then this announcement is for you. We would like you to have a date with us on the 5th of May, 2024 at 3 p.m. for lunch. Yes, lunch. As we eat, you will get to interact with our pastors and get to learn more about our church. For planning purposes, kindly use the link at the gate and at the info desk. Are you dating or engaged? Have you begun to seriously consider marriage? The marriage ministry would like to remind you that our recruitment for the May 2024 premarital counseling classes, BMCC, and the marriage 101 classes is currently ongoing. To receive application forms, kindly write to pmcc at mamlakahillchapel.org. We are pleased to announce the following wedding band. Faith Nthoki Mudashi with Githyomi Mungai on the 26th of April 2024. If anyone has any legal reasons why this couple should not be joined in holy matrimony, please contact any of our pastors. For more information about our weekly announcements, kindly scan the QR code provided at the information desk. And now, let us continue in worship. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful voice. Let's just appreciate our media team. Yeah. Don't you like those voices as they, uh, they announce all those uh, events that are coming? We have really gifted uh, people here that do that very, very well. And we truly appreciate you, media team. Many, many of you may not uh, be familiar with the name Pastor Grace Moshiri. 
Uh, but we do have uh, Pastor Grace Moshiri. We don't generally call her pastor, but the ministry that she has she does or has done in this church is very pastoral. Uh, she has provided leadership as far as our stewardship is concerned. The resources that uh, God brings into this church in terms of finances and all that stuff, uh, she is the one that God placed in this church to help us to manage and to manage well so that the ministry of this church has been going on very well. And for the last 12 years uh, or even more, she has done that. Um, Today we want to pray for her and her family. Uh, this is Mike, and Mike is Grace's husband. Now you can tell this person is struggling, not knowing how to put the words together. But Mike has also served in this church very, very effectively, has a real group leader in many other areas of ministry, men's ministry, and all the things that uh, help this church to be what it is. And we are celebrating your ministry. We are celebrating your children who have never refused to come to church. They are always here with you. Thank you so much, uh, Jerry and JD and, uh, and Matt, uh, for being great. Now, why are they standing in front of us uh, today? Uh, today, we want to commission them. They have been with us, as I said, for uh, over 10 years of ministry. But today, we want to commission them and send them to Europe. And we are not sending them to Kakstan or one of those uh, difficult uh, countries. We are taking, sending them to Denmark. So, <laughs> so uh, Mike uh, has uh, been uh, uh, offered a, a position at the UN, uh, and he's going to be working at the office there in Denmark. Uh, but for us, as we think about their departure here, we are not looking at that as just a departure. We're looking at it as God's ordained departure. And we want to be part of their lives because we have been part of their lives for over these years, uh, equipping them to be disciple makers. They are going to Denmark, yes, to work, but their number one ministry or their number one focus is going to be making disciples for Christ in Denmark. In order to be able to do that, uh, we definitely must commit them to the Lord we must affirm our partnership with them uh, and our continued prayer uh, for them and hold them accountable to represent our Savior well. Let me invite uh, our pastors and our staff members uh, to come here on stage and uh, all of us to stand so that we can bless them with prayer and commissioning. And I'm going to invite uh, Bishop Charles uh, to, uh, to pray for them and to commission them for this great mission. Um, thank you. Thank you, uh, Reverend Munala. I think let me add my own voice of uh, appreciation uh, to uh, this wonderful family, to Mike and to Grace and to the children uh, for being part of this community. Twelve years is a long time, and thank you for wonderful fellowship Thank you for your friendship. Thank you for your faithfulness in terms of being part of the community life here at Mamlaka Hill Chapel. Uh, Grace has been the faithful uh, steward, the one who has overseen all our finances. In those days, we were much smaller than we are. Now we are spread out around, and, and she continues to give excellent oversight over our resources and our finances as God has blessed us and grown us. And uh, we are thankful, Grace, very thankful for your very faithful service over the years. We've had occasion to host them and to communicate to them our deep gratitude about uh, the time that we have served here together. And uh, this is a bittersweet parting for us. Uh, but we also recognize that uh, when you're faithful, God sees it. And, and Mike here has been given um, one of those jobs that many of you are praying for. You will receive them, but after you've been faithful, okay? God is faithful, all right? It, it's a very senior position in the UN, giving oversight over many other organizations. And we are deeply grateful, Mike. 
Uh, we thank God for you and, and the work that you will do there. And we ask God that he will really bless you and make you the shining light in that place, that you will really, really shine for him. And that those people will be, will be happy that they chose you. Of course, we know it's God who has chosen you, but they will be grateful that you are part of that organization because we know uh, your, your diligence, your work, and the integrity that you will bring into that organization. So may the Lord bless you there. Let's, let's pray and just uh, bless them together. Uh, Father, what a privilege and an honor it has been to serve uh, with this family here at Mamlaka Hill Chapel. Thank you for the way they integrated into body life. Thank you for their uh, selfless service uh, week after week, uh, day after day, uh, out there in the real groups here in the church, integrating with body life and serving you with all their hearts and all their minds. Thank you that you are no man's debtor, and today they are rewarded for their faithfulness. And as they depart, Mike on Tuesday, the family to follow a little bit later, Father, we pray for that you would open their territories. Wherever they will go, they'll be blessed. This is what you did for Abraham. You said, you know, if he goes to the mountains, you will bless him. If he goes to the valleys or the hills, you will bless him. It's not where they are. It's who is with them. And thank you that you go with them, ahead of them before them, behind them. Protect them and watch jealously over them, O oh God. They are your people. I pray that they will continue to, to shine this brilliant light of hope in Denmark and wherever else that you may send them. And for the season that they are going to be abroad, may it be a season of prosperity. May it be a season of growth and expansion. As you plant them in that land, O oh God, we ask that the children themselves would flourish. That in that culture, O oh God, they would shine for Christ. That you would integrate them well. That they would strong, be strong. That they would prove to be faithful as they grow up, O oh God. Watch over them and protect them and cover them with your grace and your love and your goodness. We ask for great wisdom for Grace and Mike, as, as, as they bring up these children in a foreign culture. We know there will be elements that will be opposed to godliness. But we thank you that they are strong in you. I pray that they will be truly salt and light in that community. Raise them up as oaks of righteousness. Let them truly, truly be a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. And in years to come, may we hear of great things that have been accomplished by this family because they knew you. So today, we bless them in your presence, in the presence of this congregation. We agree with you with this posting, and, and we send them off with our love. May they never lack for anything good. May they know your abundance and your goodness. May you protect them from the evil one. May your purposes for their lives be fully accomplished. And when the time is fully done, may you bring them back safely to us. We thank you. We honor you. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Thank you. They have been given some gifts there to remind them of uh, their time here with us. And uh, I think Mike has carried um, the Moran of the burning spear. Yes. There is a Moran there. And uh, Grace is carrying a lovely lady who is uh, the suitable helper uh, that she has been to Mike. And we bless God for that. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. And thank you for your faithfulness uh, in giving towards uh, Mamlaka Hill Chapel in essence, giving to the Lord so that the work of the Lord may continue to flourish here. And uh, let me just throw in there, uh, Grace and Mike have been faithful givers uh, to this uh, congregation. And I told them the first six months, their tithes must come here until now they find another church. Yeah. But I'm not worried. I'm not worried. We do have great givers here. And some of you who are going to be challenged by them to begin to give even more and more for the growth and extension of God's kingdom here at Mamlaka Hill Chapel. So let me invite our ushers so that they can be able to provide for us the opportunity to just do that, to give.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, this is a very important time as far as our relationship with you is concerned. It's one of those times that you give us the opportunity to prove to you that indeed we love you. We love you more than anything, including money. So, Father, would you bless as we reach out to express our love to you by giving part of what you have given to us. And may it truly bless your kingdom where hundreds and thousands of people will profess faith in Jesus Christ because of our giving. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
I don't know if you're asking the same question I'm asking. Where has she been? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for blessing us. Indeed, Jesus does save. Uh, before I invite uh, Bishop, and I know our time is gone pretty much, let me just mention a few um, announcements that came from my earlier prayer. Uh, we are continuing to pray and to grieve with uh, our, one of our pastors, uh, Pastor Edu Blemi, who lost his father this uh, past week. Uh, the burial for his father is going to be on Thursday this week. There will be a memorial service in Nakuru, um, and some of our pastors, and I hope that if you can be able to find time to come and support uh, our pastor, that would be wonderful, that would be great. Uh, if that is possible, uh, but you can also give them a call and bless them. Also, in our midst is uh, Willie. I don't know if Willie is here today, uh, but Willie is brother to uh, Hillary. Hillary is one of the soldiers who died in that helicopter uh, crash uh, that uh, crash that took place uh, uh, a few days ago. And uh, as a nation, still grieve. Uh, and Willie is a brother to Hillary. And let's continue to pray. Uh, sorry to pray for uh, for Willie. And there was someone else that i forgetting. Oh, yes, yeah. And some of you may, those of you who've been here long, uh, may recall Michael Oyer, who served with us here for many years in our worship team. And also, uh, his voice was just beautiful when he would announce uh, stuff through media. Uh, he went to be with the Lord, I believe, yesterday. And so we are praying for Paul and Lucy and their family members who are part of this congregation that the Lord will give them comfort. If you uh, can get a, a hold of a phone and give them a call, I'm sure they are going to be very encouraged. Thank you so much, uh, family, for praying and thinking about uh, our members who are grieving at this moment. Uh, Bishop Charles, let me invite you so that you can come. And, um, and we're ready for the Holy Spirit to speak through you. Uh, to bless us, to encourage us, and to build us in faith. Uh, Father, that's what we exactly want to happen, that you may use your servant, Bishop Charles, to communicate what you have placed in his heart for us. We want to be edified so that we can be all that you desire for us to be. Would you do that, Lord? We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank, you. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Munala, for that. And... Um... Let me add my voice also of uh, condolence to those be bereaved families. Uh, may God truly, truly comfort you um, during this difficult time uh, of mourning. Well, uh, good morning, church. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the time of communion. Uh, one of the reasons we go back to the tenets of scripture is because these keep things keep us grounded. As we receive, uh, we go through seasons of life like you know, the seasons of grief and, and, and uh, sorrow and bereavement, we need to be reminded of the things that keep us grounded as believers. Do this in remembrance of me, the cup of the new covenant in my blood, so that um, even death does not have to devastate us. Uh, during, not because it's not painful, but because we have a hope that reaches beyond the grave. Amen? Uh, so thank you for participating in that, Reverend Munala. Thank you for leading us uh, through that, that time and those, that remembrance. It's important for all believers um, so that uh, we have the muscle to navigate through what is sometimes a very difficult life um, in, in this world. Well, we continue with uh, where we stopped last week. And uh, what we were looking at is what happens when you test the limits of grace. I pray you've had time to meditate on your own um, as we've looked especially at the character of Lot and uh, the devastation of Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, despite uh, Abraham's best wishes to negotiate downwards uh, to 10 people for the survival of the entire city or those two cities, um, there were not 10 who were found to be righteous. And we are shocked and surprised that the righteous one, Lot, uh, when he utters uh, statements that shock us, uh, a willingness to trade his two daughters uh, to, to, to go out there and be molested by this gang of crazed men who are outside um, as, a, as a better of the, or the lesser of the two evils. Later on, when it's time to save him, we are shocked at his reluctance to cooperate with God for his own soul, for his own life. 
And, 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 and we have a man who escapes with the skin of his teeth, literally. Because it has to take the angels, it's dawn, judgment is coming, it's been announced by no lesser authority than two angels, and he's still reluctant. They have to grab his hands, the, those of his daughters, and pull him out of the city so that God can rain judgment on that place. And even when he's given clear instructions of the safe haven where he is to escape, he has a plan B, and he chooses Zohar, and that's where he wants to go. And, and I think um, we had time to talk, and I hope you had time to meditate about what happens, the lethargy that creeps in when we are marinated in a sinful environment. When we find ourselves in those toxic environments, and sometimes we don't even know that they are toxic. Um, we, we just think, this is normal. When we normalize uh, conversations that are not edifying, conversations that are not righteous, things that the world finds funny, jokes that they find funny, they are probably heavy laden with sexual in innuendos, um, and they laugh at them, and we marinate ourselves in those places. And we normalize what is very, very, very obnoxious to God. And over time, it becomes normal to us. Then we become lethargic. And our ears stop hearing what God is saying. And even in times of danger, we are being asked to move. We will not move. And we end up in situations like Lot, barely making it out alive. These are choices that we make. These are choices that we make. And, and we need to be careful and think through um, where do we find ourselves? What are the, those environments that we have created around us? Uh, what is it that we are watching on a regular basis? What is it that is dominating our conversations? What is dominating our minds? What is capturing our hearts? Because you act out that which you have normalized. Who are your friends? What are the topics and conversations that you have with them? What are the jokes that you laugh at? What do you now find entertaining? What do you find funny? What do you even find relaxing? You know, you don't have to relocate to Sodom, okay? You don't have to relocate there for, 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 for these things to happen, for lethargy to creep in, for, for you to dull the voice of God. You just need to stop doing the things that are godly. And we, our nature abhors a vacuum. And we can invite our own Sodoms around us. And we find ourselves in environments that are repugnant to godliness. Um, these are things that we need to take seriously and to think about. Listen to this. Um, so Abraham is appalled that he comes the following day and where he was standing with the Lord, I think it was a vantage point. He can look and see where Lord, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah were. And, and the Bible says that, you know, he sees it, um, it's like a smoking furnace. Smoke is billowing from there. So the place was judged. His intercession did not meet the minimum threshold for God's salvation. And I'm sure he must have been shocked that there were not 10 people found for the sparing of those twin cities. So, the story now is about Lot um, and his daughters. What happens? The immediate survival. Lot and his two daughters from verse 30 of Genesis 19 left Zohar and settled in the mountains. So he eventually leaves Zohar. You wonder why he was insisting on Zohar. Because the destination for the safe haven was always the mountains. But he wasn't used to obedience or to hearing the, 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 the voice of God. So at this point, he still abandons Zohar and settled in the mountains, for he was afraid to stay in Zohar. Obviously, we, we read last week that this, this was one of the small towns that were designated for, for being overthrown, for destruction. So there's a fear there that he knows this place was supposed to be um, you know, uh, overthrown, but because he chose it, God decided, I will spare it. He was merciful to him. He and his two daughters lived in a cave. Picture this. This is many years later. 
If you read the story, the back story, at the point that he and, and Abraham are going to part company, they parted company because of how wealthy they had become. God had so blessed their flocks. They had increased, their servants had increased, everything they had had been multiplied until now there was quarrels among their own shepherds because of pasture land. Mifugo imezidi is too much. And Abraham suggests, why should our shepherds quarrel? Why don't you do this? Let's part company to, you know, um, before this thing gets, you know, um, between us. If you go to the valleys, I'll go to the mountains. If you go to the mountains, I'll go to the valleys. So Abraham, the older, more righteous man, gives him options. Wherever you go, I'll take what is left. And so they part company. So at the point that Lord is going away towards Sodom and Gomorrah, he's a very rich man. He has everything. Fast forward. The judgment comes. And, and here is a man who departed very wealthy. Uh, and you can't help but see the influence of Abraham when he was with him and the blessings that he was able to appropriate when he was with him. And now he departs, goes into Sodom and Gomorrah. First of all, he settles around Sodom, not in Sodom. And then eventually we find him at the gates. Meaning now he's even become an elder and he sits at the city gates because that's where decisions are made. But at the termination of the conversation, at the end, tail end of his long life there, at that point, he's not even married. He doesn't have kids. But now we find him, he has a wife, he has two grown daughters who are eligible for marriage themselves. They were pledged to be married. So these are many years. But what does he get away with? What does he escape the place with? Yesterday we were here, the day before yesterday, we were concluding the, 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 youth, the youth conference that has been taking here, care here. And one of the youth pastors, Lorraine from, from uh, Ruaka, uh, she was asked a question about, you know, uh, why the church is a better heaven than the world. And she was trying to describe to them that the world will take from you. It doesn't really, really care about you. That at the end of the day, it's about what they can get from you rather than what they can give to you. And, and she was trying to explain to the young people, the church is a safe haven because there you will meet people who will love you for who you are. It is not perfect, but they will not take from you. They will not seek to exploit you. They will, you know, you, you will be safe. And she gave this example of Lot and what happened to him. You know, everything was taken when he went to Sodom and Gomorrah. He barely escaped with his life. And now this man who was once wealthy is now a cave dweller. He lives in the caves with his two daughters. After years of accumulating wealth, of doing life, I don't know what kind of relationships he had, but we know the relationships were not much to write home about because when he opposed his fellow men, the fellow men of, of Sodom, with whom he had lived, they said, you, Kwanzaa, you came here as a foreigner. Are you trying to be our judge? Let me tell you, we will treat you worse than your visitors. So there were no relationships to talk about. At the end of the day, if we don't keep ourselves close to God and the things of God, the losses that we incur will devastate us. And this is the tail end of life. He's an older man. He's not as strong in terms of his ability to engage the environment and, 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 and accumulate even some wealth. But that's what the world does. When it's done with you, you're discarded. And most of the time, you barely make it out with anything. Let's be careful where we're investing our time. It's always ironical to me that... Uh, at the point that we pray to God, oh Lord, bless me, give me this, do that, in our earlier days, and God does that. And uh, you look at yourself 10 years from now, 20 years from now, if you're disciplined enough to keep a prayer journal, you will be shocked at the things you are pleading God for. Because he will have done exceedingly, abundantly, more than you can ever ask or imagine. I have a friend who we've tracked together now for 30 years. And one day we sat down to look at the prayer requests that we offered many years ago. Some of them very innocent. Oh Lord, will you one day, will I find myself one day with a wife and children? 
One day, will, will this ever happen? Oh Lord, I, I'd love to start a business. And now you look at where God has brought you. I don't know whether you do that. But, but it's often very ironical that many times as God answers prayer, as he blesses us, he gives you that wife, children, if you're like me, grandchildren. Many of us do not become wiser and godlier. We begin to fill those spaces with our goals, with our hobbies, with our friends, and other activities, and generally begin to crowd God out. In the earlier days when I was growing up, um, we all went to church on Sunday, because that's what you did, and you didn't have to be righteous. You know, you just went, because it's Sunday. In fact, you met somebody in the Sunday, and they're not in church. Well, hey, yeah. what's wrong? You didn't go, and they knew where. But nowadays, the good Christian is the one who comes maybe to church once in a month. And we are okay with that. We've normalized it. You know, when Christ rose from the dead, that day, it was the day after the Sabbath. We call it Sunday. The Romans called it Sunday. But the church calls it the Lord's Day. Why does it call it the Lord's Day? It's not your day. It's his day. And it replaced the Sabbath. And the Sabbath was a strict law by God. Six days you will do your work. But on the seventh day, you will observe a Sabbath to me. It's the Lord's Day. It's not yours. He says, I've given you six days. Do your work. But on the Sabbath, you take a rest. And the rest is supposed to remind you that it is not your hard work and your diligence that has provided for you and kept you alive for six days. It is me, the Lord. So observe the Lord's day, give thanks to him, and worship him. That's what that day is for. How much more now, the Lord's day? Before that is because the Lord worked for six days. On the seventh day, he rested. So observe that because you are my image bearers. Reflect what I did. It's an act of obedience. But you know, God, you've blessed us. About 12 or maybe 15 years ago, I, I, I was in New Zealand. And I asked my host, how many people roughly do you think will go to church today? A very beautiful, prosperous area. He told me, mm, probably about 5% of the population will go to church today. Okay, what will the rest do? Oh, you know, um, they'll hitch their boats to their cars and go to the sea. Uh, they'll go to the football match. Others will go play tennis. Many will take their children swimming. It's really our day to socialize and have a good day. As God blesses us more, we begin to crowd him out and to fill the God space with ourselves, our hobbies, our interests, etc. And God is like, just one day you can spare for me? I've kept you alive, I've blessed you, I've done all this, and now you've taken center stage. It's your day now. It's not my day anymore. You don't have to relocate in order to go to Sodom and Gomorrah. It begins with a disinterest in the things of God. It begins with a crowding him out. You're not doing something sinful. It's the good things that God has given us. And he would say, you know, I will bless you. You will eat of the fat of the land. And it, it's his doing. But it is not so that you replace those things with yourself and your interests and your hobbies. You can play golf any other day. You have six days, you can play golf. 
Why does it have to be the Sunday? Your children can engage in other activities. In fact, what we do, we are starting to model to our children that God is not that critical. You know? At the end of the day. And you know, if you do that, the next generation is worse. Because you've modeled, you've normalized something that God doesn't like. And you draw them further and further and further. That's why the book of Judges ends up the way it is. After the death of Joshua, the son of Nun, and the elders that outlived him. In fact, it says, Israel followed God all the days of Joshua, son of Nun, until he died, and the elders that outlived him. And there arose a generation that neither knew the Lord, nor the things he had done for Israel. Backsliding is very slow, and the enemy is cunning and very wise. He brings something you're interested in, you edge God out. He brings another one, you edge God out. Suddenly, oh, the last time you were in church was, oh, like, um, I don't quite remember. It's like September, I think. And it's okay, you know, for you it's normal. Oh, but you know I do online, you know. I, I know what they're talking about. There's a reason we are called a church. And the name church comes from the word ecclesia. Ecclesia means the gathered people of God. When God wants to speak to his people, he gathers them together. And his spirit is among them. And he speaks to his people. It's been like that from the beginning. Do not neglect the gathering of, people, of God's people are, as some are in the habit of doing. Those are God's commands. But we edge him out. Let's be careful. Every space that you edge God out is occupied by the world. Because nature abhors a vacuum. One day belongs to him. It's a day of the Lord. It's not yours. It's not mine. We make room for God and we look for ways that we can honor him and remember the good things he has done for us. And we don't just pay lip service to that. We do it by sacrificing the good things that we like to do by not doing them. Thereby showing that God is more important than those things. Without his blessings, you will not enjoy good health. You will not enjoy the jobs and the businesses that you do. You will not have the means to carry out your hobbies without his blessings. I should get back to Lot clearly, but <laughs> who's to say what the Lord wants? They end up cave dwellers. One day, the older daughter said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is no man around here to lie with us, as is the custom all over the earth. Let's get our father to drink wine and then lie with him and preserve our family line through our father. That night, they got their father to drink wine, and the older daughter went in and lay with him. He was not aware of it when she lay down or when she got up. The next day, the older daughter said to the younger, Last night I lay with my father. Let's get him to drink wine again tonight, and you go in and lie with him so that we can preserve our family line through our father. So they got their father to drink wine that night also, and the younger daughter went and lay with him. Again, he was not aware of it when she lay down or when she got up. So both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their father. The older daughter had a son, and she named him Moab. He is the father of the Moabites of today. The younger daughter also had a son, and, the, and she named him Ben-Ami. He is the father of the Ammonites of today. So Moab means from my father, and Ben-Ami is son of my people. We don't need to belabor that point. Sexual immorality had been normalized in Sodom. So it's a very small jump for them to think, hey, there are no guys around here. Let's get our father drunk, and then we sleep with him. And they execute it perfectly. They get him to drink. 
I don't know how they persuaded him to drink. Maybe he was stressed because of you know, what had happened in Storm, Sodom and Gomorrah. I don't know. But he drinks. They sleep with him, an incestuous relationship, and voila. You know, uh, Moab is born, and so is Ammon. You know, nature abhors a vacuum. What we normalize becomes what we act out, even when we are unconscious of it. The price that Lot would pay for having relocated his family to Sodom and Gomorrah, where they normalized sin and, 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 and immorality and all kinds of things that were raising up to heaven uh, and causing an uproar until God had to, to see, he was paying that price. The children had become that. They were actually residents of Sodom and Gomorrah. And this was not unusual, uh, what they were going to do with him. A tragedy, really, when you know that Lot would become now the father of Moab, the Moabites. The Moabites, in years to come, would be known for what? Idolatry, sexual immorality. That's the lineage. That's the lineage. And this is, this is the legacy of Lot. These are the, you know, um, the children of Lot. Contrast that with Abraham, you know, who, who dwelt um, in, in the high places with God, you know. He's doing amazing things. His usual visitors, you know, when he's slaughtering a calf, oh, you know, we had visitors. Who was it? God had visited. He's hosting God. That's what he does. And God continues to bless him. But Lord, if you fast track to what happens in, in um, chapter 23. So long afterwards, the legacy of Moab and those, those, those nations that will emerge from them um, in hundreds of years, because now this is as early as Abraham, Isaac will be born, and then Jacob, and then Joseph. Joseph will go into slave. I mean, to, as a slave, will be sold as a slave in Egypt. The family will follow him after he becomes prime minister, and then they will arise a pharaoh who neither knew Joseph nor the things that he had done. He would put Israel into slavery. Four hundred and thirty years will pass before the Exodus. So these are many, many years to come. Now, during the Exodus, as they are exiting, those 40 years, as they are exiting from Egypt and going on to Canaan, one of the, the routes will take them through Moab. But the Moabites and what they had become, the, the king of Moab would see Israel and decide, hey, these guys are a threat to me. So we, he will hire this high-level, high-end witch doctor called Balaam, all right? And say, a people have come. And they are settled around me like the sand in the sea, um, uh, or in, on the seashore. Put a curse on them. Maybe I'll be able to defeat them and overcome them. So ba Balaam is going to attempt to, to curse Israel. With, well, sorry, we are in the book of Numbers chapter 23. Balak, so, so this is Balaam's report. He says, Balaam brought me from Aram, the king of Moab from the eastern mountains. Come, he said, cast Jacob for me. Jacob, of course, is Israel. Um, come, uh, denounce Israel. Then he says, how can I cast those whom God has not cast? How can I denounce those whom the Lord has not denounced? Instead of a curse, he says, from the rocky peaks I see them. From the heights I view them. I see a people who live apart and do not consider themselves one of the nations. One of the calling of God's people is to be set apart and to live apart, to be sanctified, set apart for the Lord. And when we do that, we automatically have God's protection over us. He watches over us. Israel is unaware that there is a curse. And this guy is professional, I think. He was really knows, known. Because they said, whoever you've cast, usually they are cast. So the king has paid him a good amount of money to cast Israel. But he's here reporting, how can I cast whom God has, has not cast? 
Who can count the dust of Jacob or, or number the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous and may my end be like theirs. And Balak is like, I have paid you. How can you start blessing them? He says, what have you done to me? I brought you here to curse my enemies, but you have done nothing but bless them. He answered, must I not speak what the Lord puts in my mouth? Later on, he takes him to a different position. He decides maybe umechanganyikiwa, maybe it's, it's, it's the geography. So let's try from here. So again, he, he comes and, and says, um, arise Balak and listen. So he's addressing the king, but he's in this prophesying mode. Hear me, son of Zippor. God is not man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? I have received a command to bless. He has blessed and I cannot change it. God's people are not to live in fear. They are not to live uh, wondering um, who has cast you. Maybe some of you are in the habit, maybe you've seen certain things in the family, you've hired yourself a personal prophet to tell you what is wrong. And he has told you you have been cast. Unless you have serious doubts about your relationship with God, unless you know that I've not been working with God, unless you know that the Lord is not your God, then you can do those gimmicks and they don't work by the way. But if you know the Lord, Are you familiar with the Iron Dome? The Iron Dome is what Israel has that neutralizes missiles that are coming in. You know that? God is your Iron Dome. You don't need to know who's trying to do what to you. It's none of your business. Your business is to remain in Christ and to honor him and to make room for God. The world will try what it will try. That's what they do. But they can't reach you. They will try and they will not be able to. It's called the armor of God. It's impenetrable. Even the witch says, ah, this one I can't. There is no curse for those that God has blessed. Listen to chapter 25. While Israel was staying in Shittim, the men began to indulge in sexual immorality with Moabite women. There goes Moab and the legacy of Lot, who invited them to the sacrifices of their gods. The people ate and bowed down before these gods. So Israel joined in worshipping the Baal of Beor, and the Lord's anger burned against them. The Lord said to Moses, take all the leaders of the people, kill them and expose them in broad daylight before the Lord so that the Lord's fierce anger may turn away from Israel. What Balaam was unable to do in bewitching and, and, and putting a curse on Israel, guess who succeeded? Moab, the Moabite women, carrying on the legacy of immorality which goes with idolatry. They seduced the men of Israel and, and after sleeping and committing sexual immorality, they are closely linked with idolatry. They automatically found themselves going to the high places to worship the idols of Moab. And automatically, they lost the protection of God. God's anger was kindled against them, and the Lord said, you know, kill all the leaders. The leaders bear heavy responsibility. And expose them in public so that the Lord's fierce anger may turn away from the community. Normalizing sin is a dangerous thing. And the blessings that were supposed to be theirs were forfeited because they decided to make compromises. The legacy of Lot's daughters and Lot, Lot's children is that they would continue to be a snare for Israel for years to come. So let's consider again how we are living our lives on a daily basis. Because if you are not making room for God, 
you're making room for those other values that re are represented by the world, our current day Sodoms and Gomorrahs, and those things will come and they will influence the way we live. They will influence our children. And whereas great calamities may not come in our time, it's like putting a curse on your own children. Because you normalize not honoring God. You normalize not honoring the day of the Lord. You normalize not um, acknowledging God and who he is. There's a statement here as, as we finish and our time is long gone, unfortunately. There's much that we can say. In Romans 1, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power, his divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. So the knowledge of God is different from an acknowledgement of God. Although they knew God, they did not acknowledge him. And in our spaces, at home, at work, in our socialization, wherever we find ourselves, it would be grievous to have known God and not to acknowledge him. And to acknowledge him is not to give a mental assent. It's to change the infrastructure of how we live on a daily basis so as to make a statement, we have room for God here. In this home, we say thanks and we say grace because we have room for God here. When we are eating, we did not provide this food. The gracious hand of our God has provided. Let's give thanks for what he has given us. On Sunday, we wake up and we tell the children, it's the Lord's day, we are going to worship. The good things you enjoy in this family, he provides. And this is his day. And we go to acknowledge him. Don't make swimming and golf more fun for your children than coming to church. That would be a terrible mistake. Because those things will not save them. They will not keep them safe. They will not keep them focused on the true north. They are good activities, but they need to be held in context and given their rightful place in terms of the priority of the divine and then what is human. Unfortunately, our time is gone. I'll see you next Sunday. God bless you. Certainly, we wish we had a way of stretching time Let's stand. Yeah. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for calling us out of the world as you're done to Lot so that we can then represent you as your ambassadors. What a beautiful reminder this is for us, who we are and what your expectations are of us as your people, as your representatives, as disciple makers. May the words of your, that have come from your heart, from the book of Genesis and from these lives, continue to loom large in each of our minds and our hearts in the next week, in the next days and months, so that we will be found as men and women who heard your word took it and ran with it and were transformed by it into the very likeness of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you again for speaking so clearly and so powerfully. Let me just invite us to turn to the person next to you and let's wish each other the words of the grace even as um, uh, the scriptures does encourage us to fellowship with one another. May the grace... Amen. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. 
To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through our Lord Jesus Christ before all ages, now and forevermore. May you go in peace. Thank you. Mm. Your ways are higher than mine. Your ways are higher than mine. Your ways are higher than mine. They are higher than mine. Your thoughts are deeper than mine. Your thoughts are deeper than mine. Your thoughts are deeper than mine. They are deeper than mine. Restore my life. Transform my mind. Purge me, Lord. Your ways are higher than mine. Your ways are higher than mine. Your ways are Thoughts are deeper than mine Your thoughts 